Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Ryan, and I'm a medical doctor. In this case, I want you to know I'm a medical doctor because of what I'm going to talk about. Since my channel is called An Empowered Mind, which is what I wish for all of us, I'm usually talking about the great topic of using our minds and thought processes in a way that benefits us. Today, however, I'm talking about having a discerning mind that can think sensibly about the topic of medicine and science. It's disturbing to me and many of my professional counterparts that so many people seem to hear something about a negative side effect of a medication, vaccine, or treatment, and then embrace a fearful stance whenever they hear a suggestion that they might benefit from that treatment. The results of good scientific research seem to go out the window. Notice I say good research. Good research requires a design that is systematic, organized, and guides a study from start to finish. This helps ensure that the research is valid and reliable. If not, it isn't meaningful or trustworthy. There needs to be a clear research question appropriate data collection methods, and analyses with the appropriate statistics. That's good research. That's what peer review is for. So multiple experts look at something and decide if the research was good. If you aren't educated in analyzing the research you count on as reliable, then you need a professional. I want you to know that I have deep respect for all established medicines such as Chinese, Ayurvedic, and our own Western medicine. Any medical approach has its strengths and its weaknesses. My child was cured of chronic ear infections by a homeopath. I worked for licensure of homeopaths in the state of Nebraska. When I went to medical school, I was thrilled to see a large table book on alternative medicine prominently displayed. I like it all, if it works. So let's think about this. If I have a complicated legal document drawn up, do I ask a question on the internet? No, I get a lawyer. Sure, I might find something I think is helpful on the internet. But what the internet or an article or well-meaning friend can't offer is an assessment of my own particular situation. Experience and insight are invaluable. The human body is no different except that it's even more complex than the law. It's not smart to make medical decisions based on some story or stories we heard. It is smart to make decisions based on the bulk of scientific research. So if a topic is studied, like the effectiveness of ACE inhibitors on improving blood flow, the results of various studies could be charted out on a bell curve. There will always be outlying results, but they won't be what most of the research data support. Doctors use the middle of the bell curve to make recommendations not the outlying data that could be quite wrong. When multiple studies are done, whatever the results were in the middle of that bell curve are the results that are most supported. So simply put, it's smart to go with the odds. I had a patient some years ago who didn't wear his seatbelt. He had a friend who had been trapped by a seatbelt in an accident. I encouraged him to consider why he was supposed to wear a seatbelt. There was good reason for the seatbelt law. If he wanted to determine if he should wear a seatbelt, then he needed to look at all the data, not the one incident with his friend. Are we going to decide things because we're spooked? Or are we going to go with what automobile safety experts tell us? I cringe when I see people post pictures of their pet ailments and ask for advice. My advice would be to see a veterinarian. Two things can look alike and not be alike. One pet could have a rash, while another with a similar skin appearance could have cancer. This is very true for people too. 
please don't be afraid of your doctor's advice. No one person can know everything, but a professional with many years of training has the experience and insight that others don't. I have a friend who kind of feels like she has to hide the fact that she's using steroids to treat her autoimmune disease. Why does she feel this way? Well, of course, because some people think steroids are bad. I told her they haven't walked in her shoes. Just because almost all the drugs on the market, including aspirin, have long lists of possible side effects, doesn't mean they shouldn't be used. A doctor prescribes a drug when it's deemed that the benefits will outweigh any possible risk. People who discount the value of medications often, or almost always it seems to me, are forgetting about the damage that an illness is doing in the body. The reason they leave this reasoning out is because the general public is not going around saying, gosh, my diabetes is really slowly damaging my retinas today. They don't say it because they don't know it. Dear listener, science isn't perfect proof of anything, but it is by far the best thing we have to guide our decisions. Trust your professional. Just FYI, my peers in medical school were very largely there for the right reason. We wanted to help people with health problems. We loved science and learning and the incredible complexities of the human body. To give you an idea, my medical school had a thick, large, mm, large page book called The Red Blood Cell. <laughs> That's how much there was to say about just one of the approximately 200 types of cells in the human body. That blows my mind. Almost as much as posting a picture and asking people on social media what to do. There are free clinics, but a social platform isn't it. Take care of yourself with your discerning mind. Be careful about telling others what they should do. What worked for you is okay to share, but respecting that a similar sounding problem may actually be quite different than yours is important. Also, if someone else handles things differently than you would, it's their business. If their decision clearly lacks the best scientific data, then you can offer something from an official source if they're open to that. It's good to have evidence to back up our decisions. If we cherry pick evidence from the ends of the bell curve to support what we simply want to believe, then we aren't being discerning and may end up with results that are not great. My own mother decided to go on a natural route with her breast cancer. In her case, there were no standard treatments that were known to be curative. She died two years later and suffered because of the natural things she did. Sometimes we just want to try something because there is no good choice. I understand that. Every field has its quacks or its representatives from the ends of the bell curve. But most of us care deeply and rely on evidence-based medicine to make decisions. Ultimately, we are each responsible for our own decisions, but when we make them, let's be discerning and get help from the pros. I care about you and I hope you know what an amazing, flawed, yet completely lovable person you are. Flaws aren't so bad, they keep us humble.